I can see you're really busy right there. Um, those are for your baby soft hands. We have work to do up on the roof. What's up? I think I found the leak. You reckon? Yeah, see the water coming out? Yeah, they never primed it when they when they built it. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut around this pitch pan. I'm gonna actually cut this pitch pan off. We're gonna pull everything off. We're gonna pull all this. It's not really filler, it's caulking. It should come up fairly easy. It doesn't feel like there's any fasteners under here, so now we're gonna have to add fasteners because any of our systems, doesn't matter, fully here, mechanically attached, rhino bond, you name it, any penetration has to have, has to have fasteners on it. Pitch pockets are not that hard to do, or sealant pockets, whatever you want to call them. But we do have a lot of problems with, with contractors who just don't prime. The problem with TPO is nothing sticks to it unless it's primed. Any tape products stick well to it, but it has to be primed first. Caulking sticks well. It has to be primed first, like in the top, possibly on top of a termination bar. Uh, this, this is just a, a recipe for disaster. Some guys may come in and try to do a quick fix Put some primer down, uh, down the side, let it set up, overfill again. But, you know, that's, that's not a long-term fix. Do it once, do it right, and move on. I'm gonna make my target, it's called 26 by 30. How big am I gonna make my, my target? Measure at 26, make a little V notch, I can square this up. I don't have to use chalk lines, I don't have to use anything like that. Give this a little twist. Sometimes you get two of these little scrims, just cut one off. Now I got a nice straight line. I can come in here and cut this off. but it's gonna look a lot better than if I would just stuff it in there. Around my corners. Okay, now I'm gonna find my, because I want this the pipe to be centered. I'm gonna fold this. Kind of fold it again. There's the center of my pipe. My patch is gonna lay in there like this. Obviously, I can't slip it over that pipe, so I'm gonna have to do something like this. I have to weld the patch around this. And then this is gonna slide over here like this. And there's my target. You always need to clean the, clean the membrane. First, we start with an all-purpose cleaner. Uh, use a brush, agitate it, of course, depending on how, how dirty your sheet is. And then we take and use our EverGuard seam cleaner as a solvent and we, uh, we clean it with a solvent, we let it flash off, and then it's ready to repair. Let me show you how to do this. When it's really a dirty, dirty mess, I will use the cleaner. I'll let it set for maybe a minute, depending on how dirty it is. That way it gets a chance to work. Then I come in with a green scrubby pad or a brown scrubby pad or, or, a, or a bristle brush like this. and I clean. Now this roof is about eight years old, maybe a little older, so it's gonna be pretty dirty. So I may have to do this several times. Dave, you want some help? It gets dark at eight here. Um, why don't you give me that scrub brush? It gets dark at eight? Yeah. Oh, okay. You can, let me get this clean here. You got it? Yeah. All right. I thought you were on break. All right. I do a wet rag, but not a soaking rag. Always wear gloves when you're using the chemicals. All you need to do is wipe. You don't want to scrub it. You can see how clean this is. Now granted, this roof wasn't that dirty, but TPO can be cleaned back to white. It's gotta be white to be able to weld to it. So I'm gonna install my target. Kind of center it up with everything around it. Now when I weld this, all we're looking for is an inch and a half weld. All, we don't have to weld this entire area. That's a lot of wasted time and work. But we've got, we're covered all our fasteners by at least two inches. 
So we, now, we know we're going to have a good weld all the way around there. Notice how I stopped right here. When you already weld something, you want to leave yourself an out. But what I mean, if I would have welded this completely, if I start welding this down, I'd create another stop and start. So I'm going to leave that little bit open, and you'll watch as I'm welding, I'll be able to bring my gun right out. Okay, that's all done. Now I gotta go back in and weld my patch in here. I'm gonna cut this a little longer. I don't wanna cut it off flush. I wanna actually extend beyond this. I'm probably just gonna weld this whole thing down. It's kinda like belt and suspenders. If I were to maybe have a little void and this whole thing's welded down solid, odds are, cross your fingers, water couldn't get back in there. Hey Wally, I'm gonna clean this just in just in case, I don't know how long it's, it's been in the box or anything. Well, there's some stuff on the bottom of it too, yeah. so. It may, give me a little wipe right here too. Just right around the... Yeah, a little bit of debris, just to make sure. Ain't yeah. gonna hurt. Right. So there's a, there's a line right here, we can actually cut this, wrap it around the pipe. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do right now. And then I'm gonna have to weld a patch over top of it, obviously. These, these things are pretty thick. They're a little, they can be a little challenging to weld, but it can be done if, it's, if the guy knows what he's doing, takes his time with it. Now this is made out of unreinforced membrane. Now, I'm also gonna round my corners on this. I mean, it's just a good habit to get into. This is, I wanna say these are about 90 mils, uh, something in that, they're, it's thicker. It's a little, a little tougher to weld. Most guys think they gotta turn their gun up. I'm actually gonna turn my gun down just a little bit. Remember when I was welding field memory and I was welding on seven. If I'm welding any type of thinner end support, I'd be down around four or five. I might be down to about six on this, but I'm gonna weld it a little slower because I wanna make sure I get a good weld. So I'm gonna bring it to my penetration. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Now I gotta weld a patch to this, if you can see right here. I may just weld it so the camera can see it. Now when I weld this patch, I gotta have something to push against. So some guys may take it and use the pipe what I like to do, I'm going to center it, and I'm going to take a piece of ISO or a block of wood and wedge in there. So when I weld this patch, I got something solid. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of weld this, tack this in place for right now. I'm going to turn my gun down just a little bit. I'm going to kind of tack it in place so I know it's not going to move on me. And I know it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to kind of start welding this down. Remember, an inch and a half is all we need, but I'm going to pretty much weld this entire thing down. There we go. Get down in there. Now I gotta get my patch. Now this is unsupported. I really wouldn't want to use reinforced. I could. It'd be pretty tough. But I actually want this unsupported. To come and wrap on the inside. And I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna cut it a little long. I don't. Again, I don't want it like I did over here. I don't want it to run flush. Now I got double thickness of membrane. It's just. It's tougher to weld. And again, I got almost like a T joint here. I really want to worry about. I want to concentrate on make sure I get that. Okay, whenever you weld any type of accessory, a, cur a curb, whatever, you always start the hard part first. So this is what I'm gonna weld first. Actually, I'm gonna weld this angle change. I wanna make sure that's nice and tight. Sometimes it helps to lay a little heat on the outside of this to get this to stretch a little bit. Take this membrane, speed it up, and it'll stretch right over top of that. That's pretty much now we're in the process. We're gonna we're gonna switch gears and fill this pitch pan up. Uh, I've got my TPO primer here, my Evergard TPO primer. Wally forgot to bring the stir stick, so I'll have to use his handle. You were in charge of that. Oh uh, yeah, right. Priming the inside 100 percent top, bottom. You always want to install your sealant pocket first. If you try to do this first, you may not be able to weld it. You might get primer on the bottom of the sealant pocket and it would inhibit the welding. Now, one thing inspectors like to see is a little on the outside. I always do a swipe on the outside to let them know that I went ahead and prime. So you just do one swipe and one spot or you do the whole thing? I Well, the whole thing, if you're going to overfill it, you're going to overfill it well, I just want to make sure. Well, I'm just saying. 
nothing wrong with a swiper to overfill. So we're going to go in here and we're going to prime the penetrations. So I'm going to fill this hole up with a little caulk. So when we do start to fill this, and the people down there don't really like pitch pan filler all over their head. You can use grout, you can mix your own cement. We happen to have some pre-mixed concrete right here. And we're going to use our one part filler. So I'm going to fill this about half to three quarters of the way up with this pre-mixed concrete. Now, you don't want to fill this all with filler. You have to use some kind of grout or cement. That is GAF specification. Got a little putty knife here. I'm going to kind of level it out. So now what we're going to do, we're going to let this set up. Depending on the weather, it could take 20 minutes, could take an hour. Could take two hours, depending on where, where, what, what time of year it is. All right, I'm going to come in. I'm going to check this concrete, make sure it's set up before I continue on. Yep, looks good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take our Everguard primer. I'm going to prime this again. This way I get all of the all the residual concrete primed. I'm going to prime the, the penetration coming out. And then Wally's going to come in with our one part horrible sealant and top it off. Okay, so our pitch pan's done. Uh, Dave come here and primed our concrete. So the primer has set up and flashed off. So now we're going to come in here and fill it. We have a couple options. You can use our two part, or I'm gonna fill this pitch pan, pitch pan with is our one part. The advantage of using our one part is our two part, you have to mix. Um, this is 100% solids. It's not gonna really shrink, shrink up. It's not gonna um, shrink below the top of the pan. Plus when I'm done with this, I can reseal it and use it on the next job. Versus our two part, once you mix it, whatever's left over gets thrown in the trash. Take the lid off. Now you notice I'm going to actually overfill this. I'll pour it in here. And this is one place on a roof where we really don't care if it's pretty. Um, we want to make sure this gets sealed up. I'm actually going to let it overflow the outside of that pan. There we go. We have a filled pitch pan. So now all we got left to do is get off this hot roof, get in the air conditioning, and have Dave help me pick up the tools. Okay? That just ain't right.